so this is a real pleasure to meet you today and to come into your home that's so filled with so many wonderful paintings. Can you tell us how you got started painting and where you went to school? Well, I got started painting very early in my life because in grade, grade school I was already recognized. I had an honorable mention in the Humane Society uh, 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 Kindness to Animals, if you remember. And uh, I was just in eighth, eighth, seventh or eighth grade in school. Mm -hmm. But Harding was president when I was born. And then Coolidge, Calvin Coolidge, became president after Harding died in his first year in office. And when Coolidge left, then it became Herbert Hoover and then Roosevelt. And so that brings up to the era when most of you can remember then uh, uh, Roosevelt, who had four terms as president. Right, right. And I used to sit with my mother and dad and listen to the fireside chats. <laughs> We were lucky. My to grandmother have a, did too. Did they? <laughs> yeah. We were lucky to have a radio in the house. Uh, when Roosevelt started his alphabet soup, they called it mm -hmm. the WPA and the CCC and the PWA. Right. I went to his class. I was just out of high school. I was seventeen. I was enrolled in a art class and under the PWA. Okay. I didn't even know. And where you go to buy paints and what you buy and what you paint on. And in those days, we painted on white lead, which they do not, oh, no, no longer do that. Yeah, no, no. And the paintings that you saw back in my room, they were painted on white lead. Oh, really? I was still, uh, I was just painting at 18 and 19 years old. So I got early recognition. When I went to Carnegie, I was sent upstairs to paint with, to uh, draw with the upperclassmen. I remember and, you told me that. Uh, yes, and uh, I was awarded a scholarship, and I had two Carnegie Met uh, awards, mm -hmm. which I'm very proud of. Absolutely. But I have a hundred other awards. Oh, that's so wonderful. that would mean I really worked hard. You certainly did. You certainly did. Your house shows it. All these wonderful paintings. Well, we wanted to to talk a little bit about some of your paintings. Can you tell us a little bit about this one? This was Enoch Parrish's house. He was very good friends and helped Charlie Bear uh -huh. because uh, I was told that he actually built Charlie Bear's second house. Right. He was an architect in Cupertino. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. But uh, see it, the gingerbread on his house? Uh -huh. The remnants of that are, are, are is in uh, the remnant is in uh, Memorial Park right. when right. it was all done with new lumber. But mm -hmm. the idea for that was the the gingerbread on this house. Absolutely. Can you tell us how you did this painting? Well, the house was still standing when I took a photo of uh -huh. it. Maybe Joe Thompson may have taken the photo of it. But when I when I do my drawing when I paint, I I paint with a wet brush. Mm -hmm. I draw with a wet brush, okay. and you can see the evidence of that in my, my drawing, and that gives my drawing strength. And this is uh, oil, and it's varnished on top of that. I see. And you've got a little figure over there by the yes, house. Yes, that's in it heading out back, <laughs> and, and there must be some little shed out back there. Uh huh. Well, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful painting, and it's wonderful that even though the house wasn't saved, we did get to save the gingerbread, so it yes. is over there in I Memorial Park. I think that Park. was great that they did that. Yeah, so that's a lovely painting. And then I know you've got another one or two down here. And now, this old barn was still standing when I went there. And um, this is the little outhouse. This was before oh. city sewers. Oh, for heaven's now, sake. Now, the Budger family owned it, and then it sold it to the Tories. Uh-huh. Oh, the so Tories, the Tories didn't build it. Someone no, else built it. No, the barn. This is not the house. This is the barn. Okay. And, and Tory Avenue was named after exactly. this property. Exactly, right. And this sit, used to sit right back of where the... Bank of Cupertino is okay, today. Okay, I know where that is. And I even thought of taking this painting and giving it to mm -hmm. that bank. But I, I don't know. Uh, uh, I hope Cupertino wins. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope they do too. Or again, it was, 
it was I did it uh, for the seniors. I did it on uh, did a was the better part where they, uh -huh. yeah the yes, program yes they they have a copy of me painting this oh, really? property. I have it in my in there too, uh, and uh, I remember there was a lot of junk, including a uh, an old uh, hmm, what did it call this. Jeep, an old, oh, an Jeep, old Jeep. An art. I used to. It was parked here, uh -huh. and so that was after the war. Somebody brought an old Jeep to help them on the farm. Right, right. Yeah, that was a, a good piece of property. These old red barns. Uh, <laughs> I know it's too bad we don't have any left. All over the country, but the, it was still up there when uh, I moved here. Right, and we have my son sitting on the seat in the in the. Uh, oh, in the outhouse. In the outhouse. How cute. Well, that's a great picture of a barn. Good and colors, aren't they? Very good colors. good colors, yeah. And again, this is varnished. Uh huh. And so it's well protected. No, yeah, that's good. Does it have. Do, oh, I see it says something um, on the back here. On Torrey Avenue, yeah. Uh, the Bagyar, Bagyar, Bagyar uh, family. Mm hmm. Um, I, don't know, but I think they may have been Croatian. Yeah, let's see. What does it I haven't got. Yeah. Oh, Bagger. Yeah, mm -hmm. Bagger Tory Barn. Yeah. I think the Bagger property was down there on Stevens Creek where they're building that Main Street Cupertino, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. oh. It, that property was vacant for a really long time. Maybe they did move down there after they sold this property to the Tory family because yeah. they would have had to go gone somewhere. Yeah. But I don't know about that history. Well, then we've got one more down here. It's a little bit bigger. Let's see if I can get Well, the this glass up. is heavy. The glass is heavy. That's right. one reason why I, I stayed away from watercolor. Because this one's got a really interesting scene uh, here. Uh, uh, now, uh, the back of the, these was on Prune Ridge Avenue, and mm -hmm. this is the old Leonard property. Mm -hmm. And I titled this The Last of the Pickers Shacks. Yeah. And Leonard himself had a apple orchard on that property and we Joe and I went there one time and met him, Mr. Leonard and we bought a box of apples from him and brought them You remember home. what kind of apples he I used? I don't know but I'm sure they were great for pies. <laughs> <laughs> so, well that's really interesting because I don't think a lot of people uh, had pickers uh, places for their pickers on their property. It's very generous of Mr. Leonard to provide this kind of housing mm -hmm. for these families. Mm -hmm. And when they were done with what his had to do with the apples and whatever else he was growing, I'm sure that these pickers would go and find work with another farmer. Right. And right. they still had a good place to come home to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only other place that I, I saw in the last year or so that had um, Pickers places was a little tiny town way up in Oregon, and that oh, town had uh, you know nice. pick, Pickers See, housing. Well, I you know, always we, think it, it speaks well of somebody when they give an extra consideration to families. Yes. Well, I remember my grandfather had a lot of families that came in uh, mm -hmm. during apricot and prune season. Even when we came here in '63, my daughter Martha. And her friend went out to cut apricots, and Joe was who, who was the football player. Mm -hmm. He carried the lugs out to yes. to spread them. Uh, and remember Mariani's line. Uh, oh, we were right uh, there uh, by the freeway. Yes, just acres and acres, acres and acres of, of uh, apricot trays <laughs> laying in the sun. So, mm -hmm. Anyway, you went down to Charlie Bear's blacksmith shop, and I sat there all week and, and drew and drew, mm -hmm. and he showed me how he could pump air so the, the the fire would get hotter mm -hmm. to melt the steel mm -hmm. and uh, and it would kind of blaze up you know sure but he always had gloves on and uh, that's how I painted him with those gloves on so that painting is going to be down at the new environmental center down at McClellan Ranch Park. I hope so yeah uh, it belongs to that building mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. So what kind of tools, do you remember what you, what you sketched down there? Oh, it's a great variety. But the auctioneer who um, settled the property mm -hmm. when the prop, when, after Charlie Bear died told me that they used that book to authenticate the sales oh, of people so they knew they were really getting the, uh, the original uh, 
uh, tool. Mm -hmm. I've seen the book and they're wonderful drawings. I can't believe I did all them. But they told me, my Dr. Warren told, Warren, yes, Warren told me that a copy of that would be in the Bancroft Library in the history oh, section. Oh, really? Because it's so accurate. Yeah, you know. it is. It's a wonderful book, and it, it the drawings are just uh, to scale, and and you you put what they are, and well, so I I was waiting for a grade, you know. I, <laughs> I had to do my best. Oh, that was a project. <laughs> that was the that was the assignment. To, mm -hmm. and I know one lady did transportation on streetcars and oh, stuff, and I okay. wonder where those people are. I don't but know. But they, they asked if they could have mine printed, and mm -hmm. the Foothill mm -hmm. College did print those for Well, we're certainly glad that they did. Oh, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad I did it, and I'm glad it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it's been a real treat to be here and to meet you and to talk to you and look at all your paintings. It's too bad we can't show them all because the ones that you did when you were really young were just amazing too. Oh well, you start young. It's and I say it's, if you're born with a voice, you want to sing. Mm -hmm. And I know I was born to paint. Absolutely, mm -hmm. and it really shows. Well, and thank you so much. Thank you for coming. It was a real pleasure to have you and to meet you after reading all your articles on roots. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Gail. Okay. So nice. Thank you.